How you doing? I'm CK with Under Pressure Performance. Today we're going to be showing you how to install our newly revised fuel system on the C5 and C6 Corvettes. Now this is going to cover both the C5 and the C6 Corvette. They're very, very similar. Um, the overall layout's the same. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and prep the brackets. And these brackets are what's going to mount our fuel pump and our fuel filter housing. Um, that's actually going to get mounted right up uh, in the uh, torque tube tunnel there. So what we'll do is we're going to take this platelet here and we'll go ahead and screw the fuel pump mount to it with the uh, worm drive clamp in it. And as you can see, these screws are pretty long. So once we get the screw down and tighten, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and cut these two off right here. And we're going to cut them and grind them so that they're flush with the plate. And this is going to be our mounting plate where we mount up the pump. Now there's two of these and we're going to go ahead and prep both of these the exact same way. All right, the next thing we're going to do is prep our pump and our filter assembly. Um, so what we're going to do with that is we're going to take the AM out of the box and in the outlet portion of the AM is going to be the dash six ORB to eight AN. Now you'll know it's this one because it actually has the check valve in it right there. Um, now the dash six side here, the ORB fitting is gonna get an O-ring on there and it should already come with the O-ring pre-installed. So we're just gonna screw that on and snug that up onto the output. Uh, for the input side, the filter is gonna come with two of these ORB to 10 AN. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, before we screw those in there, let's take a look at the filter. Inside one end, if you can put your finger in there and touch the filter element, that is the inlet. If you can look in there and it's just a hollow as far down as you can see down into here, that is the outlet. So we want to keep those separate because we want the fuel to flow the correct way through it. So on the inlet side, which is again the one where you can put your finger in there and actually touch the filter element sitting right there, we're going to go ahead and screw in the ORB fitting. And again, all of the ORB fittings um, get an O-ring on it. The AN fittings, if it's going to a line, it's actually sealing with this uh, flare fitting right here. Those don't get an O-ring. If the AN fitting is sealing to another body, like on the regulator, or in this case these, then it will get an O-ring. So this one is going to get two O-rings on it, and we're actually going to screw that one into there. And it gets an O-ring to seat against that side, and that's going to screw directly into the fuel pump just like that. So since we're hard mounting on both of these, that's not an actual true AN fitting. They're both considered ORB fittings. Both sides of this fitting here are gonna get an O-ring. This side gets an O-ring and this side gets an O-ring. Now these outputs are gonna, on either side of this, are gonna go to AN lines. So those don't actually need an O-ring on them uh, because they're actually seat against the flare fitting here. So now we got the assembly done like this, we'll go ahead and slide it up into place and then we'll start with mounting our uh, brackets that we just made a second ago. Okay, now you can see we've got the bracket here. We've cut them flush on this side so there's nothing sticking up. And we'll go ahead and get these mounted up into the car. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disassemble and take off the exhaust as well as the torque plate tube that covers this up in here. This is gonna give us access to where we can actually see the torque tube because we're gonna slide the pump up into that area there. That's gonna kind of help protect it from the heat of the exhaust. Um, and, that, and that way we keep the, uh, the two of those really separate from each other. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and slide our pump assembly up. Now this is gonna be on the passenger side, right up by the torque tube. So from back here, we're gonna slide in the pump assembly and the filter. The pump's gonna be on the front side, the filter's gonna be on the back. And what we wanna do is we're gonna slide that basically as forward as much as we can. And it's a really, really tight fit in here. So get it all the way forward like that. Now, this brace here, just in front of that is where we're gonna be mounting our pump mount. So there's two pump mounts, one will go on these two. You can see we've got it mounted and one's gonna go on these two. So we'll go ahead and mount both of those right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this pump and filter assembly back in and mount it down and tighten it up with these. So we got one mounted and what we're gonna do is actually put the plate on the top and we're gonna send the M6 20 millimeter bolt down through the bottom. So with the torque plate that normally goes on here, we're using bolts to tighten it up. This is gonna turn those bolts into studs for these four. So we're gonna replace four of the bolts on the torque plate and with these bolts here, and they're actually gonna look like studs from the bottom side. But what it's actually doing is securing the plate with the pump mount on the top side of it. So we'll go ahead and get this other one installed and then we'll slide this back and we'll show you what it looks like once we get done. All right, now you can see we've got everything mounted up here in place. Now, a couple things to note is one, the orientation of the clamps here. We wanna orientate them like this so that way we can access them like this to tighten them up when we're done. Um, so we want both of these uh, bolt heads that's on the worm drive clamps here facing down. Um, two is that you're gonna wanna shrink these worm drive clamps down a little bit in order to get these plates in there. So it's easiest to close them up, bolt the plates in, and then open them back up only enough to get the pump 
to slide back in here. Now this is a really tight fit, um, so what you may need to do is actually use a pry bar and help push the uh, the torque tube over a little bit, just to, not a lot, but just to get it to slide back. So you just kind of give it a little bit more free room, slide it back, and then when you let off, it'll relax back into place. So this is very tight up in here, but this is nice and solid and rigid. Um, so next we're gonna go ahead and connect our fuel lines and we'll start running those. Okay, now here on the back on the driver's side tank, we're gonna go on the very lowest section right up against this. Um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and drill uh, a hole in there. If you haven't drained the tank, now's a good time. It's easiest to just hot wire the existing pump and disconnect one of the fuel lines. Um, whatever fuel you don't get out of it, obviously when you drill a hole, you're gonna get the rest of the fuel out of it there. Um, so we'll go ahead and do is draw, drill a hole in the bottom here. What we're gonna be doing is tapping that with this fitting here, which is gonna be a 3 8 inch NPT. That's national pipe thread. A little bit above that one towards the top of the tank, we're gonna go ahead and drill and tap it as well. And that's gonna be with this one here, the smaller one, which is a quarter inch NPT. Um, now, one thing to note about the NPT threads is they are actually tapered. So the deeper in that it goes, the wider the hole goes. So when you're using the tap, don't run the tap all the way in because you're just making the hole really big. And this plastic tank is not gonna be um, very resistive to you putting it in. So you can just run that thing all the way in. But all you're doing is making the hole really big. What we want to do is just the hole big enough where you can just start the threads and you can get one or two full turns on it before it starts to get really snug. Um, once we start tightening up the fitting, that's actually going to tighten it up. Now to seal this, what we've actually found is best that works with the plastic back here um, is actually going to be super glue. So we're going to coat the threads on this in super glue, screw it in, and then you want to let it sit uh, without putting gas back in it for a few hours, let it get it nice and hard and dry in there. Um, but that's actually going to help seal it up against there. So you're going to have the Big dash 10 fitting will be on the bottom corner of the tank, and then up a little bit higher is gonna be your quarter inch to dash six fitting. All right, now that we've got our fitting back in there and we've got our pump mounted, we'll go ahead and start routing our lines. Now the first line we're gonna do is this big dash 10 line. It's got the 90 degree. That's gonna go on the back side here. That's gonna connect up to our tank. And this straight end here is gonna wrap around and go right to our fuel filter assembly up here. Now we're gonna route this up so it's gonna go above the torque tube cover for when we put the torque tube cover back on. Um, and then important to route it around the exhaust too. You don't want it hanging or, or drooping or right pushing up against the exhaust. Obviously your exhaust is gonna have a lot of heat so we wanna keep it separate and away from there. But this is basically just gonna wrap around just like this and go right up and so we'll go ahead and connect this to here and here and we'll connect it up to our filter assembly here. All right, now you can see for the uh, dash eight line, that's gonna be the next one that we're using. So this kit's gonna come with a dash 10, an eight, a six, and a four. So next one up is gonna be the eight, and we're gonna come right out of the front of the pump. That's gonna go travel right along the torque tube here. And then we're gonna shoot right up, just past the starter net, up on the passenger side of the car. And we'll connect it with that up top to the regulator, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute here. All right, now working up here on the top side, um, we're going to go ahead and assemble the regulator assembly. Now first on that one, we're going to be coming in with our dash 8 here. That's coming from our dash 8 line that we were just at at the pump back there. And that's going to go to a dash 6. Now the dash 6 going into the regulator is going to be an, OR, it, an ORB fitting. So we are going to go ahead and use an O-ring on that. On the dash 6 side, that's going to screw right in to the regulator there. So now we have our fuel line coming in from the back as a dash 8. Coming out the other side here, we're going to go into our check valve. Now we want to pay attention to the flow rating on the check valve. And we are going to go a dash six going into the check valve and a dash four going out of the check valve. Now it's important to note this check valve here is eight ORB. So both sides of this get an O-ring. That one gets an O-ring. And the other side over here gets an O-ring. So we'll snug those up until they're nice and tight like that. Now this side here, this dash six, that's gonna go into the regulator. Again, it's an ORB fitting on that, so that also gets an O-ring. And then we'll go ahead and screw that in there. So here's an O-ring, on the other side's an O-ring, in between the check valve is an O-ring, and in between the check valve on this side is an O-ring. So the AN fitting on this side and the AN fitting on this side are the only two on this that do not actually get an O-ring. And we'll go ahead and snug all that up so it's nice and tight. So we should have a dash eight coming in here and a dash four leaving there. Then we're gonna have a dash six, which is gonna be the bottom one here. Um, again, that's an ORB fitting on one side, so it's an AN fitting essentially with an O-ring. And that one's gonna go into the bottom there. That's gonna be our return line there. So once we get complete with the assembly, that's basically what it looks like. Now we have our feed line coming from the pump here. This is gonna be our output going to the fuel rail. 
and this is going to be our dash six line that goes back to the tank, which is the quarter inch fitting we installed in the tank just above the dash 10 fitting. Now, this is designed to go up in this area over here. Now, of course, depending on your layout, what you've got going as far as manifolds, turbos, and such, um, it's going to dictate how much area and room you have over here. Um, basically, it's just meant to go up in this area somewhere. Anywhere you can mount it where it's not going to be in the way or encumber anything else is going to be ideal. Um, you could even mount it back over here behind um, the fuse box assembly. Um, but somewhere in this general area, there's no specific place. We left it open, and there should be enough length on the line that you have a little bit of freedom to move it around. So we're going to take and connect the 8A in here, then we're going to come off of here with the dash 4, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. All right, now you can see we're going to go ahead and mount this regulator right over here to the fuse box, and it's got the dash 4 line coming off the front of that, and that's going to go over and plug into our fuel rail. Now the factory fuel rail is actually a 4A end uh, valve on it for the test port, Inside of that 4AN valve is a Schrader valve. It's like a tire valve. You need to remove that Schrader valve first and then attach this line to it. If you do have aftermarket fuel rails, we do this, this system is fairly modular, so we can adjust the line size. If you want to do a dash six up here, you need to plug into different areas. Uh, but overall, this has got quite a bit of movement on it, so we have a bunch of different mounting options, basically just somewhere up in this area. This one looks like it's going to work out really well right here, so we'll go ahead and bolt that up just like that. Um, from there, we're going to go ahead and attach the dash six line, and we're going to go ahead and run that as well. We're going to run that right next to the dash eight feed line coming up right here, and we're going to run that back up through the torque tube all the way back to the rear end in the tank. All right, so now we've got our dash six return line coming from the bottom side of the regulator up top, and we're just going to set this up in here. We'll go ahead and zip tie it up into place um, to keep it and hold it up in there. This is again going to go right next to our dash 8 line um, above the, uh, the torque tube cover plate here and we're just going to root this back up here and 90 degree right here is going to plug in. You can see we've already got this one mounted up. It's going to plug in to right there and that's going to be a return back to the tank. All right, included in with the kit, we're going to throw in an extra 90 degree and straight um, for the, uh, the dash 6 here, one, one for the dash 6 and one for the dash 8 that's coming up. Um, so you can see with the return or the uh, feed line that's coming up right there, it's got a straight on it and it's just not quite going to mate to this well. So we're going to go ahead and switch that out with the 90 degree that we're going to include in the kit with it. That way when it comes up it makes a 90 degree as opposed to coming in straight. This is going to give you guys a little bit more flexibility as far as moving this around. We're going to do the same thing with the, uh, the 6A in line. So whatever's not installed on here will come with the additional one. So this one's got two 90s on it. Um, it'll also come with a straight. Now. The return line on the back is going to take a 90 at the tank, and the feed line out the back is going to take a uh, straight at the pump. So those are kind of set, but the other ends up here where it connects to the regulator. If you're mounting it up in the corner, it might be better to come straight out of it. If you're mounting it up a little ways, it might be better to do a 90 and then hook back along the firewall and come out of it there. So we're going to include a couple different options with the kit. That way it's a little bit more um, transferable to whatever you guys are using it for. Um, now, in order to switch these out, Basically where this joint here is, you're just going to unscrew that, take this fitting off, stick the other fitting in, screw it back together. So this has got the 90 in it, we're going to unbolt it here, slide the straight fitting in. It's pretty simple. Um, but that gives you a little bit more options and flexibility in terms of with the kit. Okay, now that we've got that all plumbed up, what we're going to go ahead and do is clean up on the bottom here. We'll remount our torque plate and we'll go ahead and put the exhaust back up. Now those four bolt holes that we actually replaced um, with the bolt going down, that's going to act as a stud now. So we pull this cover back on. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the supplied with the kit. There is four washers and four nuts, and we'll go ahead and screw those on, and that's what's going to tighten it up in that area, and all the rest of them are just going to use the factory original bolts. All right, now we're going to go over the wiring. Um, the wiring itself is not included with the kit because everybody's going to want to run it differently and connect into different locations and sources and that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll go ahead and go over the basics. That way you have an understanding of how to hook it up. Um, a couple of key things I want to cover is one for your power source, make sure it's coming from a fuse source. So if you're not tapping into an already fused location that's, that's got a fuse for safety, like you're tapping into the battery or one of the hard power lines right over here on the fuse box, make sure you put an inline fuse in it. Uh, number two, AEM recommends a 10 gauge wire uh, for running the fuel pump for the ground going to it as well as the power. Um, so from there, we'll go ahead and connect everything up. Now what we're going to do is wire in the relay. And so we'll go over the different legs on the relay here. Um, and the colors on this might change. So actually, I'm going to go after just the relay itself here. Okay, so your two odd pins, where they are facing different from each other. 
That is going to be your input and your output. The two pins that are facing the same way here, those are going to be your triggers. So we're going to go from a ground and we're going to go to the hob switch here and then we're going to go to your trigger. The other side of the trigger, we're going to take that over and run it to an ignition source. Now the easiest ignition source to tap is going to be a fuel injector and it's going to be the pink wire on any of the injectors. So that way when the key is on and in the on position and your fuel injectors are hot and live, that gives it power here. When the hob switch is triggered uh, with enough boost pressure, that's going to trigger your negative here. Uh, coming in across the input and the output, we're going to come from our battery source. Usually it's easiest to connect it right up at the fuse box, but again, you can connect it wherever you want to. Um, make sure it's got an inline fuse on it, and this is going to be the one that we're going to run a 10 gauge wire to. That's going to be the input to the, uh, to the relay here. The output from the relay here is then going to go down to the fuel pump itself, and that's going to go to the positive terminal on the fuel pump. And then the negative terminal on the fuel pump is just going to go to a ground anywhere down there. Now, to wire in the hob switch here, you'll notice it's got three different legs on it. And there is writing, it says NO, NC, and C. The two legs that we're going to use are NO and C. That stands for normally open and common. So we're going to go from the ground up to the common, from the normally open out to the trigger on the relay. And then this is set, and we're going to go ahead and apply this to a boost source. So what we'll do is we'll use an adapter fitting. You can screw this directly into your intake manifold or into your intercooler piping. You can use an adapter and switch it over to a vacuum line and tap it in that way. Um, but basically, our boost pressure is going to be applied to here. And so what will happen is whenever the system hits 5 PSI or greater of boost, that's going to trigger this hob switch, which is going to activate the secondary fuel system and turn on the secondary pump. Now, this is adjustable, so if you actually take this rubber plug, right out of the back here. Down inside there, there is an Allen key and you can adjust it. So if you notice it's coming on a little late or if it's coming on too soon, um, you can actually put an Allen wrench in there and adjust it. In is gonna increase the pressure it takes to turn it on. Out is gonna decrease the pressure. So we'll go ahead and get all that wired up. Um, and then the last thing to do is set the fuel pressure. All right, now to set the fuel pressure, um, we're gonna mount the gauge into the uh, regulators just like this and the top of this is where you adjust the fuel pressure. So you want to unscrew the lock nut and then use the 3 16 Allen wrench. When you screw it in, that increases the pressure. When you unscrew it, that decreases the pressure. Now what we're after is somewhere right around 60 PSI of fuel pressure. The stock system is running at 58, so we don't want to crank it up a tremendous amount more than that because it'll overrun the stock fuel pressure regulator and it can damage it. Um, the same thing, we don't want to connect this boost reference line here. We're just going to leave it sit just like it is in vent to atmosphere. Now, if you are running a full return system, you're removing the regulator, you want to run boost reference, that's fine. Um, but for the basic, just general installation of this, running the factory fuel pressure, leave that off just like that. Set your base pressure to 60 PSI. And once you're done, lock that nut in and you're set. Okay, now we've got our system completely mounted up in here. And to test it, what we'll do is we'll key the car into the on position. So that way it powers up everything and gets our ignition power source. And then we're gonna take and actually just use a wire and jump right across the two terminals on here. You can see we got this one screwed into a vacuum block here. So we're gonna jump her across there with the car off. That's gonna trigger just the secondary fuel system. That's gonna allow us to set the fuel pressure on it as well as verify everything's working and that we have no leaks in the system. Uh, once we've done that, we set the base fuel pressure. We'll go ahead and set the engagement pressure on here, and then we're good to go, and this thing is ready to run. All right, and that about covers it for this installation today. Um, again, as always, if you guys have any questions, need help with the installation, feel free to drop us a line or shoot us over an email, and we'll get you taken care of. And thank you again for watching.